Warming up, finally. <clears throat> ah, sometimes sitting on the porch is like sitting in a sauna. It just ah relaxes. It's beautiful sometimes out here too. I'm just totally amazed at what God can do with so little. I mean. The reality is, is that if you had seen this from where all these plants started, you would not believe what they are and have become. And that's true with you and I, is that what we were before is a far cry from what we are today. Whether we know it inside or not, God has brought us a long ways towards the perfecting of ourselves that he is accomplishing for his glory. And the amazing thing to me isn't just that he's changing us and making us into his image, but that as imperfect as we are today, he can use that imperfection to cause perfection in what we're doing today. That blows my mind. I mean, Craftsmen understand that if there's a weakness or a flaw in one part, then you use the strength of another part in order to compensate for it. So you can mix those blends, you know, in order to create a stronger bond in time. But God is the master craftsman who's able to use our weaknesses for his strength and to be able to accomplish perfectly, even though we are the imperfect part. That blows my mind. That just constantly amazes me every day as... He uses me or uses you or uses any imperfect tool to do what he would do with lies, with even physical aspects, even social accomplishments, even governments or any number of things that God may be doing in order to bring about the salvation of somebody somewhere at some point in time so that they would get to know him. <clears throat> when your heart aches, have you ever had to deal with a recurring heartache? Maybe it's something from your past. Maybe it's something you were living with and living through right now. Whether past or present, it weighs heavy. Life seems harder. The hurt and heaviness hang like a dark cloud between you and joy. You want to cry, but you know you do it might go on for days. And though tears might relieve the pressure, you know they wouldn't change a thing. You wish you could write it off. Or if it's a person, you wish you could just forget them. But despite the tears, the pain, the torture, you can't seem to let it go. <clears throat> Sometimes running away from the heartache seems attractive. But would running away really solve it? You look at others and they seem so happy. You sigh wistfully and wish things had been different in your life, in your situation, in your relationships, or in your experiences. You wish you had known better, had done differently. Others seem to have what you like to have in their relationships, or in their circumstances of life. Emotionally, materially, spiritually, physically, intellectually, professionally, you feel, they won, I lost. Maybe because you smile, no one knows. Maybe you just cover it up and no one suspects. Maybe because you are silent, no one can share, relate, and give you hope. So you feel locked away in your loneliness and your heart burns. The happiness of others only makes your pain worse. It shouldn't. You want to rejoice for them, but you can't. You hurt too much. Sometimes you may even have to deal with envy, with jealousy, or with grief, or anger, or depression, or wanting to die. I do understand, beloved, because at one time or another, I have had to deal with all of these. And more and more as I read our mail, I know I'm not alone. There are others who are going through the same experiences. Christians are not exempt from heartache. Yea, Though not exempt, we do have the means to endure heartache without falling apart. For this we have Jesus, his grace, and his sufficiency. For this we have his word, his promise, his words. If, we, if I do not know that to be true, I couldn't keep on keeping on. Through my own heartache and through our ministry, which exposes us to so many who are burdened with incredibly heavy and overwhelming heartaches. Teaching people the word, showing them where to turn in the midst of their pain and confusion, helping them develop and deepen their relationship with Jesus Christ is what makes the difference. It does for me, and it does for this ministry. 
I cannot change their circumstances. I cannot cure their heartache. I cannot change my own circumstances or cure my own heartaches or headaches. But I know who can. And I have learned that despite heartache, I can go on and my life can be effective and is probably more effective because of it. And because I know this on a personal level, I have the same message for others. The cure for your heartache is found in the great physician, Jehovah Rapha, and his healing balm of Gilead, the Word of God. As a matter of fact, I believe that people who have heartaches and who, in the midst of those heartaches, cling to God and to his Word will be those who are most greatly used of God to impact their world. This is the truth with which the Lord encourages us in 2 Corinthians chapters 1-5. through I urge you to take time in the next few hours or days to read it and to study the passage. Our God is the God of all comfort, and he comforts us so that we may be able, with that same comfort, to comfort others, that grace and that strength to help others. Blessed be the Lord God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our afflictions so that we will be able to comfort those who are in any affliction with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. Paul tells us that at one point he was so burdened that he despaired even of life, but God comforted and delivered him and used that burden to deepen his trust in God, 2 Corinthians 1, 8-10. As he did with Paul, God manifests through us the sweet fragrance of his character. Our heartaches and hurts are the very tools he uses to transform us into the image of God. We all, with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as from the Lord, the Spirit. We are ambassadors for Christ, pointing others away from things which are seen, the temporal or temporary things, to the things which are not seen, the eternal ones. So take courage, valiant warrior, fight the good fight of faith, for soon it will all be over. And then only one thing will matter. Have I pleased my Father, God? For momentary light affliction is producing for us an eternal weight of glory far beyond all comparison, while we look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. 2 Corinthians 4, 17 and 18. There is no real joy that can be expressed when a person is depressed. They can say that they feel joy, they can pretend like they have it, they can exemplify it or try to manipulate it. But the reality is, if you're depressed and you're bummed out and you're discouraged and God is bringing you through something, then the only thing you do is go through it with Him. You pass through it. You pass with him through it so you can see when you look back on it that God was with you all the way and that is why we turn to him every day whether we're happy whether we're sad whether we're joyful whether we're in despair or whether we're in exultation we always turn our attention back to God to hear what he would say because he loves us because he cares for us and because whatever it is you're going through he wants to be with you in it in the heights and in the depths, in the breadth and the length thereof, because in eternity you will be with him, and he has promised that.